All right, guys. I've just found this cool tier list. It's quite a short one. It's just talking about spy weapons. And it's going to be ranking from amazing to trash. I didn't name these, and these came custom named. Very cool. And I'm going to change amazing to S tier because, you know what? I would say all. All of these are amazing. All TF2 weapons are amazing. But not all TF2 classes, all TF2 weapons are tier. S tier means that they are literally just the best. They are better than any other option. They will beat every other option. They are just the best. The kunai is S tier. The kunai, if you can use it, is the best knife. Period. Girl, literally the best knife. Stock is usually the best for each um, each class. Uh, SCAS gun, rocket launcher, wrench, possibly minigun. Most, it is the stock. The kunai is the stock, but better. The Tommy Slav is the stock, but better. This is the Tommy Slav, the spies. The knife is pretty good. You kill someone, you disguise. The kunai is better. You kill someone, you have more health than you would normally. You can disguise. After that, you might take damage, you kill someone, you literally have more health than you would have. Yeah, it's just that good. It's that good. When health is such like a, a like a, it's like a tool for spy. Like you, you can use your health to your advantage uh, at any point. You can get shot at by the enemy at any time, and it doesn't mean that you know. It just means that you have to run away and get a health back. But the kunai, get a stab, your health is back. It's amazing. The revolver. The revolver is S tier. It is the best revolver. It does consistent damage. It is just good. Um, it doesn't have any quirks. It is stock. It is great. It is the best. Um, I don't have much explanation for that. Um, but there you go. It is just the best one. Um, Sapper is just... That's what you should be using. And whilst I, I'm on that, I'm going to put the red tape recorder in trash. I'm actually going to move it up to weak. Because the differences are minor. But they're your only two options. And why would you choose this one? There is basically no reason to choose this one. This one is the weaker one. Something else is going into S tier. The Invis Watch. Um... It's opinion based though. I'm gonna put the other two in viable because they're all very good and you should get used to using them all. They are all very, very good. Very good at doing their job. It is just the best though. It's the most consistent. It's the easiest to use. It's the best. You can move around, you're not put down with it. It's not like if you use it, you can you cannot you can't use it for a while, like the Dead Ringer. You can't use that. It's one time use until you recharge it, and you get you, you get called slurs if you use this one. So don't use that one. Uh, this one is is it's a great time if you know how you, how to use it. Good for you. If you don't, then you're gonna be moving around. You're gonna be crying because you don't have enough cloak. It's going to be a bad time. Because you have to stay still with this one. But with this one, you can move around. You can pick up ammo packs. It's great. Literally the best. That's why it's an S tier. These guys are inviolable because I see them all as very good. This one is just the, the best option. 
L'étranger. It is not best here. The damage is incredibly weak. The damage on this weapon is weak. I feel like I'm shooting little peas at the enemy. If I shoot with this. The crits are unsatisfying. It's just a sad weapon if you're shooting. If you're not shooting, this is the best weapon. But you should be using your gun as spy, and that's why Revolver is here, and Latrange is here. If you find yourself not using your primary, your gun, then equip the Latrange. The Latrange allows you to cloak for longer. It allows you to increase cloak, uh, uh, get cloak back when you shoot people. But it's quite weak. It's not as reliable and strong as the revolver. That's why it's down here. The ambassador is... is it balanced? It's balanced. It's not viable. It's not S tier. It just gives you slower shots for the chance of getting a 50 headshot or 100 headshot. I like to use it really close up. Just shoot those uh, snipers or engineers whilst they're distracted. Get those easy headshots and then it's it's here. It's just balanced. It's not a good, it's not great, it's not viable and it's not S tier. If you want to be great use the the stock or Latronche, they're just better options. And Borsa, I barely use this guy. Barely use the uh, Enforcer. I'm gonna put it down here. It goes a bit more damage, but after that, it's it shoots pennies like the Latronche. It's quite weak. Um, a diamond back. I'm gonna put in I'm gonna put in The reason for this is that it's incredibly loud and it's incredibly slow. Yeah, I don't think it's it's not slower than the ambassador. But the one thing bad about the Diamondback is that you want to save those crits, right? You want to save the crits for those crucial picks. So, if you don't know what the Diamondback does, if you stab someone with your knife, you stab their back, you will get one crit. I believe that's true. Um, honestly, I might be wrong with that. You might get two for a backstab, but you get a crit, which does 100 damage, about, I think it's 102 or 103, um, damage. And you can store that for your life. When you die, it runs out, it's gone, and you have to get that backstab again, obviously. Also, when you sat a building, when you sat a building, it gets destroyed whilst you're sapping it, so you destroyed it. Uh, you get crits. I think it's two for each building or one. I'm not too sure. Uh, please comment down below. I am very silly. But basically you get crits for backstabbing and destroying buildings with your sapper. See, the issue with the Diamondback is that it makes you a worse spy. When you sap at a building, you should be shooting the building with your revolver, Letrange, Ambassador, Enforcer. But when I have the crits stored, I do not want to waste them on a building. So that means that the engineer gets time to remove the sapper, it means that I'm stuck there wondering what to do. I'm like, should I stay here, wait, for, make sure the building is destroyed, get those crits, and then pick at a medic? It's not that good. 
it's very loud if you're using this. You're gonna die more than you think you should because it's loud, people hear you, people want to kill you. It's bad. It's not a good weapon. Use the revolver unless you're on a... If you're on Uncle Dane... It, I don't even know if Uncle Dane does no, no crits. If you're on a server that does no random crits, use the enforcer. If you're on a server that uses random crits, like casual, use the revolver. The random crit from a revolver is as good as the, imp the diamond back. I, I keep on calling this the enforcer. Don't use the diamond back, guys. Use the ambassador, the tranche, revolver. It's great. That's my opinion. But as a spy man, I say use all these weapons and understand them. Understand which ones you do well with. I do not work well with the diamond back. I find I die more than I should. Okay, we're on to the knives. Where do I put the stock knife? Where do I put the stock knife? The stock knife is viable. It's good. It's not S tier. It's got no it, no plus other than there's no downside. There's no downside, there's no upside. Like many stock weapons, that is great. But the kunai just beats it. Because the upside can, can completely uh, negate the downside if you're able to get one backstab, two backstab, three backstab. The knife, you get one backstab, you die. The kunai, you get one backstab, you get damage, you get another backstab. It's just better than the knife. Use the kunai, use the revolver, use the invis watch. The best. It is a chef kiss of spy loader. Next, your eternal reward. Where do I put your eternal reward? Is it balanced? Is it weak? Is it viable? Or is it S tier? I can tell you now, it's not S tier. And it's worse than the knife. So is it balanced or is it weak? Now that is a difficult question. Is the your eternal reward weak? This weapon is incredibly fun to use. It's incredibly fun because it means that the confusion of being a spy is just there for longer. The players are so confused that you're able to take out so many people. It is very, very good once. Once one or two people know what you're doing with the Your Eternal Reward. It's a bad weapon. You stab a soldier, you're going slow. You stab a heavy, you're going slow, slow, slow. And people kill you. People know what you're doing after the first time you kill them with this. And people can, you know, figure out what you're doing. When you're able to change your disguise at will with, with literally every other knife, it means that you're in control. It means that you can get away easier. This is not a knife you can get away with very often. But if you can, have a lot of fun with it. But if you can't, it is weak. I'm putting it in weak. Even though it is incredibly fun the first time. The first time you use it, it is incredibly powerful. The Spicicle. The Spicicle is a trash knife. I don't think that is a common thing people say. Uh, people don't really talk how trash the Spicicle is. It's funny. But, um, yeah, it's a funny weapon. You can use it. You can use trash weapons. And I'm going off the name. It is trash. It's it's le it's less than weak. It's a uh, barely a knife. <laughs> it's a pretty bad weapon. Um, definitely for newer players, this is not a good weapon. 
If you're a bit more experienced, it can go a bit more up to balanced, a bit more to the weak. But it is a bad weapon for new, new spy players. It won't get you... Um, I don't know how to talk about this weapon. It is... Uh, people talk about how survivable it is. And how easy it is to like get long kill streaks with it. I think that's just the playstyle with the weapon. If you get burnt, you've got to leave. You got to run away, and that's what the bicycle helps with. It lets you get away, but it's not. It literally gets rid of your knife. It's uh, bad. Uh, I don't think. I think. For the spy people who know how spy works, we'll understand that, you know what, I'm putting it in trash. That's okay. Okay. The big earner. The big earner. Let me try think. Let me try think. Okay. The big earner. Okay, so the your eternal re reward is like the Hulong Heater for Spy. It is incredibly fun and situational. Once you've used it once, the other team know what to do. They will murder you, they will stay away from your flames, whatever. The Big Earner. is like the big earner is like the the natasha and i'm putting i'm putting it in weak above all these weapons though it is better it's better than all of these weapons Litronje is like the hulon Kita. the big earner is like the natasha in the way that it's quite effective. It's surprisingly effective. The Natasha is surprisingly effective. The difference between this and the Natasha is that it this is fun to use. The Spicicle is like the Brass Beast in the way that it probably is more survivable. You probably survive more than you should. But it's because you're doing things that you wouldn't with the other knives. You, you with the Brass Beast, you're staying in locations that are better for you. you you're being more slow, you're being more heavy-like, and you are surviving more. And the Spice Skull, when you're in danger, you get away, because you don't have a knife. But if you just learn those techniques and use it with the Kunai, with the knife, with any other weapon, just... this is trash. I'm not saying the Brass Beast is trash. It is. Anyway, I think that is our tier list finished. Quite an easy tier list, to be honest, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, uh, there's gonna be like no editing on this video, I don't think. So, uh, thanks for watching.